Here are two good points to remember. If a joint doesn't move enough, then we have to help it to move. If that joint moves too much, then we have to make it more stable by strengthening. But above all else, every patient deserves good education. For this video, I wanted to talk about generalized neck pain. That is neck pain that didn't have some trauma attached to it. So you might have done something repetitive, especially with the change of season. Maybe you got out and gardened or something like that, or woke up with a crick in the neck after a long day of work. What's not covered in this video is numbness and tingling. I'll cover that later in a more specific video. What I find is neck pain is directly related to your posture. We live in a society where everything we do is in front of us. Our body is very efficient. It, with gravity, tends to force you forward over time. And that position is not a position you were made to be in. And so you can get neck pain from that. I always say there is a balance to all things. And so what I find is that with this poor posturing, one side of your neck gets tight. And what goes along with tightness is weakness. The other side gets weak. Now, if you were in the clinic, I would analyze your range of motion and I would most likely do some hands-on things. What I will be asking you to do today is to self-mobilize to get your neck moving a little bit better and to self-analyze. Your neck moves in six simple directions and when we do something functional we combine those directions but most people being since we're forward-headed don't have an issue looking down it's looking up <laughs> unless you're a meteorologist or an astronomer uh, not very many people look up that being said most of us don't use full rotational motion and majority of us never use a side bend motion as you can see my left side is quite a bit tighter than my right also people who tend to get very stressed out from job life work what have you and don't have a good outlet majority of the time stress comes out in neck pain and we'll talk about some mindfulness training techniques to hopefully help you de-stress. That being said, our plan of care is just like any physical therapist's plan of care. It follows a pattern. We try to contain pain first. Then we fix swelling if there is any. Then we correct your range of motion, followed by your strength, followed by proprioception, followed by function. Now that being said, I get so many patients who come in and tell me their x-ray results and x-ray only shows bone. And what we were taught in our imaging class was one view is no view. So if you don't have an MRI or a CAT scan that shows a little bit deeper of the structures attributing to your neck issues, then I wouldn't solely rely on an x-ray for diagnosis. I always get a patient that tells me, Joey, they told me I have degenerative disc disease, or Joey, I have degenerative joint disease. I've been diagnosed with that. And I tell them all the same thing. I likely have that too. As humans, we degenerate naturally with gravity compressing us downward. And so I wouldn't solely say that your problems come from one thing. Your problems probably come from a variety of things. Likely, you've gotten into a habit of watching TV, reading a book, playing on your phone, playing on the computer, driving, all in a forward manner. And what that does, if you see me here, driving, looking at a book, going through my phone, so on and so forth, it puts your head forward. Now watch this. I have full downward motion, but in this position, if I try to look up, I lack motion going upward. Okay? So first and foremost, we need to fix your posture. And once we accomplish that, we can start fixing the rest of your issues okay so that you're a well balanced machine now if you saw my general shoulder pain video you'll hear me say this many many times motion is lotion but not just any motion it has to be therapeutic I never want you to do anything that causes you pain I want you to stay between no pain and a mild discomfort at most and hopefully we can start to rehabilitate your motion so that you gain your function back and reduce your pain again motion is lotion if you find a movement that feels good to your neck Please continue to do that motion in moderation. Uh, never overdo it because you have structures that are already angry and you can't ask too much from them at this point. They need to be re rehabilitated to their normal function before you can really press the issue. 
Well, hopefully with this level one neck home exercise program that I'm providing with you, uh, you stay on the level one for a week to two weeks until you feel you've mastered it, and then you just go up to the next level and so on and so forth. All right, there are two different range of motions. There's normal range of motion and functional range of motion. Normal range of motion, most people have a very hard time getting. And functional range of motion, which is motion that is necessary for your daily functions. Most people have enough functional motion to do functional activity, but not everyone has normal range of motion. So I found a couple research articles that went through the normal functional range of motion during 15 activities of daily living. All right, so what did they find? Well, we come down to the results and we find that for these 15 different activities of daily living, 13 to 32 degrees was needed for forward bending or looking up, 9 to 21 degrees was needed for side bending either way, 13 to 57 degrees for rotation. It's important to note that backing up a car required the most range of motion of all of the activities of daily living, but in general, personal hygiene activities of daily living, such as washing hands and hair, shaving, applying makeup, entailed a significantly greater range of motion relative to just walking or traveling up and down a flight of stairs. So what we find here is the second study, and it says basically a similar thing. 13 activities of daily living tested, and what they found of the 13 daily functional tasks performed was tying shoes, forward bending to upward bending 66.7 degrees, backing up a car with rotational motion 67.6 degrees, washing hair in the shower, forward bending and upward bending 42.9 degrees, and crossing the street, rotation to the left 31.7, rotation to the right 54.3. Needless to say, this is the minimum range of motion that your neck needs for you to complete these daily living activities. All right, so I'm gonna to try to define a trigger point the best I can. A trigger point is basically a small portion of muscle that's stuck in a contraction. I find that people who have an imbalance of tightness and weakness for a very long time tend to be more prone to have more trigger points. Also, people who tend to have too much stress that uh, shows itself in the muscle tend to have more trigger points. The most common trigger point for the neck is at the base of the skull, and it can refer pain into your face, similar to a headache. Okay, so if you were to put in neck trigger points, you wouldn't really find too much in Google. So you have to know that the base of the skull bone is called the occiput. So what you find is that we wanna go sub-occipital because we wanna be below the occiput looking for trigger points. Now you can see Trigger points are basically if you press that X, chances are you have a referral pattern if you have a trigger point in this red pattern. You can see that there are many, many different muscles and each muscle has a trigger point. A physical therapist spent her whole career mapping these and I'm just a messenger basically. This is a common one here. I also find the semispinalis muscle causes some pain. You can see him right here. Now. If you want an immediate relief, you hold pressure on that X. Whichever X causes you pain into this pattern, you hold that pressure until the symptoms subside. Once they start to subside, I want you to move your neck in all directions, find which direction makes it worse, and hold that worsening. Now, I don't want you to you know, make yourself wilt over in pain, but you know, tolerable pain, mild discomfort usually is what I say and hold that until it eases up and then go the opposite way of whichever direction, neck direction you went and that puts the muscle on a shorten and a lengthen and what you find is you actually work that taut band of muscle that's stuck in a contraction out by doing that repetitively. If I did this manually it would take me between 30 seconds and a minute in each position to get you relief. Now what is a long-term fix? A long-term fix is to restore the balance between strong and limber and that's what these home exercises are for. Alright so here's the level one home exercise program for the neck. Alright the first thing we start with is the core. We'll talk about the abdomen first and then we'll kind of move to some other cores. So the deep abdominal core that I'm referring to I want you to activate it by sucking your belly button in like putting on some tight pants. Now here's the kicker. I don't want you to go to 100% I just want you to engage this muscle so roughly 25% but you may have noticed that when you did this, 
you probably held your breath. Now when our brain does something it hasn't done in for some time, it tends to shut off breathing for whatever reason. So just remember to breathe, tighten your core by sucking in about 25%, and do that with everything that you can remember to do, like getting in and out of a car or a bed, doing chores, going to stand, going to sit, taking stairs, walking exercises. That'll help stabilize your low back, and that's our first core. And that is important because of how a core exercise is defined. Core exercise is defined as any movement of two or more joints. So you have your shoulder, your elbow, your wrist. You go to raise your arm with those three joints, and that's a core exercise. All you have to do is engage your core. So that's why I want you to do this with everything. Next is a simple chin tuck. So what you're going to try to do is give yourself a double chin. This is good to lubricate the neck vertebrae. And as you recall me saying, motion is lotion. But what I don't want you to do is to perform a nod like nodding yes, or open your mouth when you do this chin tuck because it tends to use some compensatory muscles. Next, we're gonna squeeze our shoulder blades down and back. I only want you to pull down to a, a mild discomfort and then once you get accustomed to a mild discomfort being maybe halfway, then start to squeeze further and further into the range of motion as you can tolerate. Again, these are the three core exercises that are very important for you to do before you do activity. So if you wanted to get plates out of your cabinet, I would like for you to suck your belly button in 25%, tuck your chin slightly, doesn't have to be 100%, again, we just want engagement, and then squeeze your shoulder blades down and back and hold all those while breathing while you want to do something. This will cause you to be more stable. It's just like building a pyramid on something firm. If you have a set foundation, then what you build on top of it will be much stronger. Next. I just want you to lie over a tightly rolled up towel. I used to start with a full towel roll with my patients, but many of my older patients couldn't tolerate it because they haven't been in that position for some time because of the way that they sit throughout the day. So instead I want you to start with a quarter to a half of a full roll and then progress a thicker roll as you can tolerate and this will take some time. Multiple weeks is what my patients tell me. Do this at three places, your lower, your middle, and your upper breastplate. Do this for as long as you can tolerate. Hopefully you can tolerate it the first time for at least one to two minutes and then gradually go up to five minutes as you, as you can. This will help you with your posture and it will make you more erect. Next, I want you to stretch your pecs. The pec is a big muscle that tends to pull your shoulder blades forward, especially in our forward bent lifestyle. And so it is necessary for us to combat that. To do that, you just find you a corner if you can't find your corner, let me know. I can give you a variation of this stretch. And while you're in that corner, you just place your elbows about shoulder height, okay? You take one step forward with either leg, and then using your body weight on that leg that is forward, you lean a little bit and you should get a stretch on the front side of your shoulder, chest area. That being said, I do want you to switch legs as I find that the leg that is forward is actually the side that gets more of a stretch. So I want you to obviously stretch both sides. Next, remember I wanted you to do some self mobilizations, okay, because I can't put my hands on you unfortunately, and we need to get that neck to move. Motion is lotion. So what I would like you to do is to put a towel roll behind your neck. You hold on to it, and you're going to look down chin to chest and let your arms hang and let gravity assist you too. Pull you into a forward bend for a little stretch. You don't even have to pull to start out with most times. That being said, I do want you to be able to progress over the weeks. The second part of this exercise is your bread and butter. When I give this one to patients, they usually tell me that it's their favorite one. So starting in the same position with a towel roll, tightly rolled up behind the base of your skull, grab the ends, you're gonna look up to a comfortable position, and then with your arms, you're gonna pull your neck up and away. This is basically like a self-traction to a minor extent. And again, it helps you to increase your motion into an upward look. Hold both of those for five seconds. Repeat 10 times, a couple times a day. Morning, night type routine is usually good. Next, we'll do rotations. Rotations are always fun because my patients get them confused. And it's all about the hand placement. So what I want you to do is same position as the one above. Cow roll behind the neck. You're going to hold in a slightly different manner. So this time, you're going to switch arms. Now, the arm that's on the chest isn't going to go anywhere. He's just a placeholder. So don't cross him over the opposite way or you're gonna choke yourself and I uh, don't condone that. The other arm though, bring the towel roll across your jawline. As you can see the fellow doing here, 
and then rotate the opposite way of the towel roll that's on the jawline. Now, the reason why it's the opposite arm, you get a better pull usually. Okay, now if you have a bad shoulder, then you can do the same side if you need to. Uh, on occasion, I give that variation. But again, motion is lotion, and all we're doing is trying to give you a little extra motion by using your arms and a towel as a simple system. And then we talk about posture. Posture is one of the most important things for humans, especially with musculoskeletal issues. So, the first three exercises are going to restore your posture. And if you do them in conjunction, then you find that your posture will be anatomically correct. So what is anatomically correct posture? Step one, core, 25% sucked in. Step two, you're gonna perform a full chin tuck, but you're gonna come off halfway. So instead of it being 100% of a chin tuck, you want about 50%. That being said, with the shoulder squeezed down and back, you wanna do 100% of, of that motion too and then come off halfway again, and then that'll be your anatomical posture. Now again, this is level one, so I want you to be consistent over one to two weeks until you master this, and then I hope that you can step up to level two, and I'll have that video shortly. There always comes a time when the patient asks the money question, how long until I get results? And I like to tell them this, consistency is key, so I would like you to do this day in and day out. Never try to compare yourself day to day, because we all have bad days. But try to compare yourself week to week and give yourself weekly updates because it'll take some time. I like to say Rome wasn't built in a day, but it was surely destroyed in one. So give yourself a break and just trust the process. I always say it takes between two and four weeks of consistent day in day out stretching to change the length of a muscle at rest. Muscle strength takes a little bit longer. Now, it's going to take the muscle two months or longer to get stronger in its own right. If you do these exercises every day, you're going to be like, well, Joey, I'm feeling stronger already in just a week or two's time. Why is that? And I'll tell you the same thing I tell everybody who asks me that question. It's because your brain's adapted to what we've asked it to do. Neural adaptation, or the brain adapting, tends to happen between eight and 20 weeks. The more you refine the motion, the more you ask your body to use what you're asking it to use, the better it will be, okay? 